Hey guys, it's me, Myra. Um, I'm back, and I just wanted to quickly um, do another series on the multi-series that I'm doing about Stephen Dewey's um, presentation on the effects of drug abuse on the adolescent and adult mind. And with the last video I did, it was mostly about uh, marijuana and meth, um, and how there's meth in marijuana in 60 to 75 percent of the marijuana across the country. Um, so that's really important to think about. But also, you guys, um, it's really important that you guys look up meth heads and look up people that have done meth. Um, what it does to the brain is irreversible. You know, there's neuroplasticity and you can get some function back, but you'll never be normal again. There's no such thing as being close to normal with um, the abusive use of um, methamphetamines. So, for example, um, I was, it's terrible, but I was just telling my friend, I was like, you tell me somebody who's ever done meth. I was like, you never see people do meth and look better. You know, like they start doing meth and you start to see them deteriorate and fall apart. They start losing their teeth. Their face starts to like change. Their skin changes. Everything changes. Like look at videos about methamphetamines and people that have used them and you'll see them completely deteriorate. Now there are people that do stop, I guess. I haven't heard of it, but let's just say. There are some people that do stop, but the way they look when they stop They'll never get back to the way that they looked before they stopped. It's kind of like when you see an adult and they've done drugs in the past, you can kind of tell by looking at someone like they're an alcoholic, you know, because um, you know, if somebody takes a drink after their first drink and their whole face turns red, they're usually an alcoholic because it's all the blood rushing through because it's normal to them. Um, it's just a, a symptom or a sign. Uh, so I always keep that in mind when I going on a date with guys, I always check to see like, hmm, do you drink a lot? Um, but when you see somebody who's older or even teenagers, you can tell by looking at them that they've done meth because there's a certain look about them. Um, just like when you see like a 50 or 60 year old guy who was a pothead, there's something that's a little off about him. He's kind of like spaced out, his little air, he's like, what? Oh, <laughs> you know, like there's just something off about them that you can look at them and be like, that guy smoked a lot of pot when he was young, you know? Um, and that has to do with how it affects your brain. Um, so with methamphetamines, uh, we had discussed earlier that it has to do with your dopamine levels amongst other processes of your brain. And when you and I laugh, when we laugh, um, our dopamine levels go up 5 to 8%. When you do meth for the first time, your dopamine levels go up 9,000%. Now, this, doesn't, this isn't supposed to motivate people to run out there and be like, oh my God, I want to try meth. No, because it's the hardest drug to not be addicted. The first time you do it, you're almost automatically addicted to it because you're constantly chasing that first high. You're constantly wanting to feel that again and again and again. It's not a real state of mind. This is my personal opinion. This has nothing to do with Steven. Um, it's basically you're running away from your life because you don't like the way your life is and doing the drug is so much better and that's pro usually the basis of all addiction, um, you have to learn to love your life and you have to start doing things that make you happy, you know, because drugs, they're not good. They're, they're not going to help you sustain a lifestyle. Most people that do drugs on a consistent basis either die or end up homeless, you know, and nobody does a drug the first time to end up homeless or die. Nobody. So why are you doing it? You know, but that's just my personal opinion. Anyway, go back to the facts. Um, so the, the way that your brain functions, right? There's these things called PET scans and they actually light up when there's brain activity, um, as well as like, you know, dopamine and serotonin. It can actually measure these levels, right? Um, and with a meth head, your brain literally starts to die. Like there's no activity in parts of your brain. Like, do you understand how serious that is to not have any activity in parts of your brain? And there's nothing you can do to get that back. It's irreversible. With weed, weed tends to hit the prefrontal cortex, the, the developmental part of your brain, the part that helps you make good decisions, um, helps you, you know, cope with things. Um, a lot of potheads tend to make poor decisions in the long run, you know, and even when they're smoking pot, they'll be like, I'm not going to work today. I'm, you know, I'm just going to chill out. 
um, not all of them. There's a lot of functioning potheads and that's what kind of skews the perception. Understand that the weed that people are smoking now is not the same weed that Bob Marley sang about. Okay, this is not the weed from the 50s, 60s, 70s when weed was cool. Even the 80s and 90s. I've noticed the change in my friends who were smoking weed in the 90s when I was growing up to now and I, I was like and I just tried it then and as I saw them changing and I saw you know this progression I think once we had um somebody had given us something to smoke I think it was the second time I ever tried weed and it was laced with something and that was it for me I was done like I've tried it the last couple of years maybe two to three times just to see what I'm missing out on because it seems like everybody's smoking weed but I'm starting to realize that it's because there's meth in it and they don't realize that they're addicted to the meth um, because there, there is something wrong with the weed nowadays. I'm telling you right now, I've tried different things. And the last time I tried weed, I felt like I was tripping. I didn't feel like I was high. And that's a bad feeling. If that makes any sense. You're not supposed to hallucinate and like trip out in your mind when you're high. Like they're two totally different feelings. So just be careful out there if you are smoking weed. You know, you might think it's cool and it's fun, but the damage that it's doing to your brain and your brain function, I mean, if you have children, how, you know, what you're going to put them through when you get older and how they're going to have to care for you because of the choices that you made now. Um, anyway, so they were talking about um, how when you do a drug, or you drink alcohol, um, the next day, so like, okay, you do a drug, you drink alcohol, different parts of your brain light up, right, and then they die, and then the lights go out, right, literally, like, I wish I had these, these examples to show you, because you're like, where did they go, um, the next morning you wake up, you don't feel the drug in your system anymore, but the effect on your brain stays for six to seven days, or let's say five to seven days. So that effect of all the lights going off and your brain not functioning properly, that's still there. It takes a full week for your brain to recover from doing drugs or alcohol, which is why we have a lot of weekend alcoholics, because at the end of the week, they feel normal again, and then they want to drink. Um, so just be aware that even though you feel normal and you look like you're going back to work and everything's fine, the actual function of your brain and its ability to light up and these chemicals to work the way that they're supposed to, it's not working anymore. Like, it's, it's, it's off by five to six days. So your brain function is not where it's supposed to be. It's really important um, to think about because you're just like, oh, no, but I feel normal in the long run. Because, you know, this is what my problem is. I, I'm mixing my personal opinion with what I learned. So just so you know, like this isn't like Steven, you know, like the facts are Steven's information and what I learned at the seminar. Everything else, um, like right now what I'm going to say is personal opinion. Um, this is my personal opinion, so I'm, I'm just pointing that out. The, the thing with society nowadays is that we are about instant gratification. Like, oh, I just want to have fun. I just want to live my life. YOLO. Like, fine, whatever. But when you're older and you can't make decisions and you can't keep a job and you don't know why and it's because of all the drugs that you did and the damage that you made to your brain that you caused on your brain, like, like nobody's going to care later. They're going to be like, well, you made the decision before. You know, the government can only help you so much. Like, you have to realize that all the decisions you're making now are going to affect you. And I'm going to make another video about STDs and STIs in a little while because I'm getting certified as a sex educator. And I want you guys to understand, like, what's going on in the world. Because people don't think that they can be hurt. Like, everybody has, like, a Superman complex nowadays. And I don't know if it's social media or because you see people get away with it. But, like, hello, like, Charlie Sheen just came out that he's been living with HIV forever. Like, that's what happens when you sleep around and you cheat and you do all these things. And you do drugs and you share needles. And, you know, you can't, you can't go on living like it's a party all the time and you can't go on thinking that you're immune to everything you may not see the damage now because you're young but it will affect you when you're older 
It's going to affect your relationships with your spouse. It's going to affect your relationship with your children and your grandchildren and, and the type of medical help that you're going to need when you're older because now you're going to need more medical help. Like imagine living a beautiful, fruitful life where you're healthy and everything works and you know you don't have to go to the doctor that much. Now you're constantly going because things aren't working properly because of the decisions you made when you were younger. Think about that, guys. You know, like, let me school you about teaching you about a lot of things, but more, more importantly, it's about teaching you how to think in a way that you probably didn't think before so that you can be aware and make decisions that are best for you based on knowledge. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you guys, but I think that's going to be the end of this video because we're going close to 11 minutes and I don't like to make long videos. Um, but I'm going to do the next video on STDs and STIs because <sighs> you don't even want to know. Bye, guys.